how to take dramatic photos of your miniatures with just your smartphone and the hobby materials that you have in your desk. While the photos that you see on my intro right here are taken with a smartphone, they're not necessarily taken with the normal materials that any other hobbyist would have. I've been taking photos on my Instagram with what I call a light box right here. And it's a foldable little box where you put a little screen. And there are a bunch of LED lights on the inside. So when you build this thing up into a box, turn on the switch, you get illumination from your miniature all over. And the reason why I like that light box is because it shows all the angles of the miniature and really illuminates all the parts you really worked hard on. But recently, I've been looking into more dramatic types of photos which you can see on my Instagram from people who follow me. And I seem to be enjoying that effect as compared to the normal way of just shooting miniatures and showing them off from every angle. And knowing that these dramatic photos didn't need a light box but only utilized the tools that I had here, was quite an interesting topic and I decided to share it with you guys at home. My name is Louis from Louis Loves Minis and you're watching a show called Hobby Mo Pro, the show designed for any miniature and scale hobbyists that's looking for motivation and productivity in their YouTube feeds. So if you like this type of content, do subscribe and let's get into the video. So the materials you'll need is a black cloth or shirt like what I'm wearing right now, your smartphone of course, some wax paper, some paper clips, and a hobby lamp which I'm using right now to illuminate my face. And of course, a scale model or a miniature that you want to photograph. So if you've been hobbying for quite a while, I'm pretty sure you have all, if not most, of these materials back home. What we'll do here is we'll turn our table into a little photograph or photo booth type of area. And we'll start by throwing over your black t-shirt onto most of the table and then illuminating it with your hobby lamp. And the wax paper is there because you want to sort of diffuse the light. Now, I'm not a professional photographer, but I've been told it is a nice way to illuminate your miniature without making it too stark or too bright to avoid those overexposed areas, which we'll talk about later. So I'll be talking about the concepts that I think about when I'm taking photos of my miniatures and we'll sort of use that to go through the motions of the process of doing the entire thing. So first of all, let's talk about lighting. When we're painting, most normally we consider the light coming from the top of the miniature down below. Maybe you might be a bit more adventurous with your lighting and you want to sort of paint the light as if it's coming from a different direction or maybe you have OSL. In the same principle in a dramatic photo, you also can use your single or maybe multiple hobby lamps to sort of change the direction of where the light's coming from to also influence the actual shadows that will be casted on your miniature. Now again, the objective here is to be a bit more dramatic with our photography for miniatures and not exactly cover how we painted it. So with that regard, the lighting also influences the story, the subject matter, or the focus of the viewer on the photo that you're about to take. Now it's also worth note saying that at this point you want to already cover your hobby lamp with the wax paper and clip it on with the paper clip just to make sure everything is secure as you move around the light in your hobby lamp. Next let's talk about focus and that's pretty much easy when you're looking at the smartphone. Most if not all smartphones when you tap an area in the screen it automatically uses its programs and AIs to adjust the lighting and the focus to the area that you tap. So normally, you would want to tap on the area where you want your light to be the brightest because assumingly from the first step, your light is also pointing to the focal point of where you want to draw the eye of your viewer. You also want that to be the sort of sharp part of the photo and everything will be out of focus so everybody will look to where you want. And the idea that we're trying to replicate is like those in old time Renaissance photos where the contrast is really high and extreme where you have a lot of dark areas and you have a light area. And using that simple lighting contrast and focus contrast makes it easy to draw where you want the eyes of your viewers to be. And that also eventually tells a story of what you want. Do you want to talk about the shoulder pad? Do you want to talk about this specific unit or this specific soldier in that unit? Do you want to focus your attention on a specific type of equipment? So as opposed to people on Instagram who are just documenting their miniatures, there are other people there who want to document their miniatures and tell a story. And using this type of focus and contrast and lighting makes a good deal. In some phones, there's also a professional mode that you want to play with. 
And if you don't have a professional mode in your camera, we'll get to that a little bit later. But again, I do want to say and mention I'm not a professional photographer. In fact, I'm just taking some informal lessons from a friend right now. Thanks, Edric. And hopefully when you go to my Instagram, my miniature photo photography might look a little bit more better. But what I did find about when tinkering with my phone in the professional mode is that you could already influence and enhance this type of light and focus contrast play and the first setting that I was playing around with is the ISO. From what I understand, ISO is basically taken from the concept of actual film being able to absorb enough light. So at least in the digital sense, that's just showing maybe how bright your image will actually show. And of course there are other settings that influence brightness, but going with the ISO setting for your professional camera mode, you can already see the impact of adjusting the ISO up and down and you can already influence how bright those well-lit areas are and how dark those areas are at the back. And then of course, there's the aperture setting. Although in most cameras, there is no such thing as a real actual aperture because aperture deals with the physical part of the lens that does not exist here. But it also simulates the amount of light that goes into the camera. And the way we lube photographers, smartphone-dependent users take that in is to also figure out another way of adjusting the brightness because if you notice when you adjust the ISO too high you get a noisy effect on your photograph but when you want a smooth photo you keep your ISO a bit low and then you adjust your aperture to adjust more lighting without risking that noise and then of course my favorite part is the manual focus in the professional mode because you can literally see what parts of the miniature is being sharp and what the rest of the parts of your photograph is out of focus. Okay, all this contrast between light and darkness and focus and sharpness helps to direct the eye, which is really what this is all about in placing a dramatic photo. You want the viewer to look at the photograph and sort of direct its eye in a certain journey to make them feel like they're in that photo learning about what's happening. Are they in a battle? Are they charging towards something? Are they charging at you? Are they looking at something? The reason why I placed the black t-shirt there is because normally our hobby tables are messy. Normally our hobby tables have different types of colors at the back that could appear as non-existent in the normal battlefield or non-existent in the theme of the miniature you want to portray. And for me, the most neutral background is black because it just really highlights all the colors on your miniature. At the same time, black cloth doesn't catch as much light. Therefore, when you see the photo, all eyes are on that miniature. Whereas opposed to taking a photo with a distracting background, there are other things people could look at. They can look at your cutting mat, they can look at the paint bottle at the back. So if you don't have a professional mode on your camera, that's fine. I'm sure for you people who are using Instagram, for you people who are using Visco or other editing apps on your phone, there are other ways you can fix this in post-prod. And the settings there may be a little bit different, but the settings you want to play with is things that will enhance the focus and sharpness of your image at the same time, bring that contrast to what parts of the photo do you want sharper and brighter and which parts of the photos you want blurrier and darker. So if you notice most of the Warhammer art, like in that dark Imperium box, you'll see that the miniatures in the forefront, they're in focus, they're crisp, they're clear, and the other miniatures on the side, they're blurry, they're a bit painted haphazardly. And that's sort of the same principle that I want to bring in the photography here. I want to direct where people's eyes go. And using that type of contrast is the easiest way we can do that in the most cost-effective manner. Because let's face it, I'm not a photographer. Most of us are not photographers. But we want to show off our miniature in a very dramatic way, in a way that's not always just in the documentary style. You could give this a shot, give this a try. It's very easy to do in my opinion. In most cases, you can just tap the screen of your phone and everything will adjust. But if you use those principles, I believe that there's a lot, a lot of ways that people who aren't experienced in photography like me can make their miniatures look dramatic and look great on your Instagram feeds or on your phones or something you can show off on Facebook. So I hope you guys picked up something from that little experience of mine. Again, I'm not a professional photographer, but these are things that I've been picking up along the way and experimenting with my smartphone and looking at other people's photographs. And I'll be linking an Instagram feed that sort of inspired me to try this type of photography. At the same time, I'll also be sharing my email down below because I do want you guys to sort of email me your work. Maybe we could show, share feedback. Let's grow together and sort of developing our 
photography prowess and who knows maybe we might I might even share your photos in the next video or I might even share your photos on Instagram my Instagram is also there so do give it a try I don't believe it to be a high effort I don't want to intimidate anyone with this type of photography because I believe the technology makes it really really easy for us to do so do give it a shot I think your paint jobs your hard work deserve this type of dramatic or a little bit type of drama in your photography so thank you guys for watching and staying at the very end again this has been Louis of Louis Loves Minis reminding you to hobby every day to keep the screws away.